Hi, my name is Dr. Yu. I'm an anesthesiologist and I have my patient here. Hi, I'm Kate. And not only is she uh, a patient, but she's actually also a nurse. Mm -hmm. And she has consented to let me try out this intubation box here uh, for her procedure today. Yep. Uh, this is a procedure that this intubation box is designed to help anesthesiologists protect themselves. So with all the shortages of PPE, this box right here can go over the patient's head and ideally the shoulders a little bit. I have you scoot down just a touch for me. Perfect. And we're on a cart right now, which is different than if it were on an actual bed. But you can see that for me, for my intubation, and I'm gonna have you lower the bed just a touch. Um, perfect set, good. So for me, I am not going to have any aerosols and I am going to be protected through the armholes as here. And I'm gonna have room to manipulate and do the things that I need to. So the first things that I'm gonna need include my trusty video learning scope. I happen to have a glide scope here and my endotracheal tube. I've checked my vitals. This patient is doing quite well. Her oxygenation is perfect, which may not always be the case. I'm gonna actually place the tube here ready to go so that I can grab it somewhat easily. We'll see how that works. And then I also have my circuit and I'd like to introduce also, we have our certified anesthesiologist assistant here. Hello, I'm Gwen. And we're gonna have her help here. You may or may not actually have an assistant in the room, but she's here just in case, since this is my first, very first time doing it. And so we're gonna pretend she's got my patient here. Kate has an oxygen mask of some sort. Maybe it's a non-rebreather. Hopefully it's lower flow nasal cannula oxygen. And for our purposes, why don't you go ahead and hold that there for her. And so you may not even have the opportunity to be able to pre-oxygenate your patient, but I'm gonna slip my glide scope in from here, actually just like so. So we're pre-oxygenating. I have my vitals. I'm gonna push some of my induction drugs here. And Kate, darling, we're gonna go off to sleep now, okay? If you like, you can count backwards, but I don't tend to do that. Mm -hmm. Give me about 30 seconds or so and you're gonna be going off to sleep. We're gonna take excellent care of you. And if we don't, you're gonna have it on video to watch later. This might sting a little bit going in your IV, okay? You're doing great, everything's going just fine. Nice big breaths, all the way in and all the way out. So I've pushed my induction drugs, and she's gonna go off to sleep soon. And I'm gonna do a rapid sequence intubation. If you have a helper, you could consider having them uh, perform cricoid. That really defeats the purpose here, though, of the intubation box and not really having a helper. So I'm gonna have Wen go ahead and step back. Before we do the aerosol producing procedure, she's welcome to exit the room. And after I see some fasciculations, which I'm starting to see right now, I'm gonna prepare for my procedure and I'm gonna put the glide scope there. So I'm gonna actually put that there. Let me reach. I've got my two arms in here and my tube ready to go. I'm gonna scissor here and we're entering in. I'm looking at my video learning scope. I've got my epiglottis in view and I'm pulling up, I'm grabbing my tube. Coming in from the side here, watching what I'm doing. Going, and if you can watch the cords right here on the glide scope, yeah. you can see that going through there. So there's my tube, and coming out with my dialect, coming out with my glide scope. I'm going to now pull up my cuff. Sealing that off, connect here, and now I'm going to bag my patient. And I've got fog, I have end tidal CO2. I'm gonna remove my material from 
here, outside here. So all of the aerosols in theory are on the inside of this incubation box as well as on the current materials I have here that I could toss separately. It might have behooved me to tape the eyes. And I'm going to put her on the vent. And I've got some pre-stripped tape that I kept on the box that I folded inside out. That I'm going to secure now to her face. And one more for good measure. extra long. And now I've got a tube. I've got an intubated patient and um, we didn't give any fentanyl with this procedure which is sort of realistic with our shortages but it's also because this particular procedure is not uh, going to cause significant amount of pain. So now I can remove my box here and make sure that someone can help me wipe it down with alcohol in the room and I can proceed with other things that I need to do and we have now a controlled airway. Thank you for watching. So there's a lot of attention to these intubation boxes ever since they made them in Taiwan. Uh, and this is the one that I used today earlier on my lovely patient, Kate. However, on the second usage, you can see that it actually splintered up here. This is acrylic glass that they use some sort of acrylic glue. And unfortunately, you can see here, it's actually even come apart just in two uses. And, and honestly, you know, it's very light and perhaps not as durable. And as far as the width, I think they made some modifications uh, to the Taiwanese prototype. This one actually is too big and too wide to fit on this bed. Today I have with me Johnny Cartwright, Assistant Director to the Simulation Center, and he has done an excellent job of making an even better intubation box. Let's give it up for John. Thank you, Dr. Hugh. I'm Johnny Cartwright, guys. So what we've got here um, is a the base model, or the base design behind this is the Taiwanese design. The only thing that I have modified is a larger diameter hole, arm hole. Um, I've also added a third auxiliary hole so that you can actually assist in handing a tube cricoid pressure, BVM. Um, I've also added a small port that you can see down here that is based off of a 6.5 ET tube, um, fits in this hole. You can add, then add a HEPA filter or at least a 0.3 micron filter to this inside here. And then once you're on the outside, we can actually attach um, a wall suction to this. And the whole point of that is that with the high flow that you will get um, by uh, pre-oxygenating, using uh, whether it's a nasal cannula or bag, we wanna try and eliminate some of that positive pressure that's created and create negative pressure using this. It also, should there be any coughing or something that goes on during intubation or extubation, this can help uh, try and draw away some of that uh, splatter out and away um, from you know hands, face, things like that. Um, but ultimately, this was only about one centimeter wider, to be honest, from the original design, only because I used a thicker uh, 0.334 acrylic. Um, I also used a Weldon 3 is the, um, the commercial name. Weldon 3 is Where an acrylic. Where did you get that Weldon 3? So I actually bought the Weldon 3 on Amazon. So, is there anyone else that's been helping you with the system? Yeah, actually, uh, Lily, Eli Lily and Company has been helping me tremendously. Luckily, I was able to get some um, spare uh, material from them and they've been able to laser cut these holes. I highly recommend if you can try and get them manufactured with these laser cut holes. Um, my first design actually was more similar to the one that Dr. Yu just showed, but using a jigsaw and other um, you know, hand, hand tools can make it a little bit rougher and harder to maintain a perfect circle. Now, can you tell me a little bit, the other holes were wider apart, but you maintained the distance with the Taiwanese model. Why was that? Correct. The main reason I wanted to do that is because um, just some of the simple physics is that I didn't want to widen the arms too much because I feel like as far as the geometry is concerned, you want to try and keep your geometry. Um, you don't want to widen your arms too too far out because you're going to lose the ability to have that uh, you know angle of attack, so to speak, when you're doing the DL. We're going to have someone model here for it. What do we have here? This is Grace. Grace is one of our anesthesia nurses. 
As you can see, my hands here are at the right, right uh, you can see that my motion here, I do have to manipulate the tube a little bit if I were to DL, because it is a little bit long. I do have to make sure I maybe have to change the way that I come in um, and advance. My stylet is sticking a little bit, mainly because of the height. What can I do to change the height of the box if I'm running into trouble like that? So the other opportunity you can do is actually take this um, box, lift it off of the rails, and then what you can do is actually shift it sideways, tuck the arms in, and then use the um, side arms of the bed to actually then support it. So you can actually get about three inches of height back onto um, the table. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, as I... All right, so, oh, actually, and with that three inches, I have just enough room that fits Correct. that ET2 a lot better. And from a peak standpoint, that also works really well too, because most beds don't even have those arm boards. So if, if the rooms have arm boards, just use them, because then you've got plenty of room if you have a wiggling kit in there. All right, anything else you'd like to add, Johnny? Um, no, I, I think that uh, really the big thing right now is just sturdiness. If you can try and make sure that you use, if you're going to use acrylic, use something that is really specific to acrylic. Well done three, I highly recommend. This is a very sturdy, very thick, and it is heavier, but it is definitely more durable. What do you have to clean it with? So you can use this with, you can use your sanding wipes, any alcohol-based cleaners that you're um, using right now. I've just been using the sanding wipes that we have. Um, whatever you guys typically use to clean off uh, your items in the OR. One other thing that I have done as a modification, I don't have it here to show you at the moment. Um, we, um, a couple of my colleagues and I actually went and found just your basic PVC uh, toilet flanges that fit over a four inch PVC pipe. So the actual diameter is five inches on the outside diameter, which fits perfectly in here. The nice thing is it gives you a little bit of a shelf almost to put your arm on, but also on the outside, it allows you to have about two and a half inches of um, of a, of a lip that you can actually take with your PPE on a sterile sleeve, roll it over that, that collar, and then stick your hand in that sleeve. And that'll give you just additional PPE on top of your PPE you already have on. And that way, when you come out, you can roll that back, roll it, and throw it out. So here we're gonna test out with a smoke pencil, the concept of aerosolization with the negative pressure port over here. And so again, that port was, uh, I believe, a six and a half ET tube connector along with a filter. This is actually one of our humid events. It's 0 0.3 microns. And right now I do not have the suction attached. So this is just as is. And this is um, a little smoke pencil. So you can see that we're filming here and we've been filling up this entire intubation box with some smoke from the smoke chamber here from this smoke pencil. This is that haze we're creating right now without the suction. You can sort of see it's going all over the place. I'm going to turn on this negative pressure suction port and connect the tubing and see if it starts to divert at all. And I would say that it's probably not super effective unless I divert it directly here. So anything right now, you can see that continuous flow into the suction port. And let's sort of see if I bring it further away, you can sort of see. So about right now, let's see, that's about two inches away. The suction's no longer strong enough, but if you bring it as close as two inches, you start to get it laminar flow right around, that's actually one inch. So anything that's about an inch away will be suctioned, but as far as everything else, you can sort of see anything up here, over there, it's going to be all over inside of the box. So the negative pressure suction port is a nice idea, but probably not worth the effort. Special thanks to Andy Shi owner of Seraphim Asian Grill for buying me my first intubation box.